Hello, hello. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good whatever. Uh, welcome to Verbling. I'm uh, Teacher Oakley. And once again, as we've been doing all week at this time, we will be learning vocabulary, specifically collocations, uh, words like adjective and noun combinations, or even entire phrases. Uh, maybe we'll we'll learn a few idiomatic expressions um, or colloquialisms. Uh, in any case, words that go together, which we use to talk about uh, today, we're going to uh, be looking at words that are related to work and working. I just noticed, I actually just noticed before class that, oops, I gave uh, yesterday's lesson. I gave today's lesson yesterday, and so today I'm giving actually yesterday's lesson, but they're very closely related. Yesterday was business, was uh, it was supposed to be work, but I taught uh, collocations related to business, and today is whatever, vice versa. They're very close anyway. Um, okay. Uh, in any case, uh, we're going to be doing some reading uh, together. Well, we're going to look at a couple diagrams, do a little bit of reading an advertisement, read some other information, and um, and we'll be talking about these uh, co-locations as we go along. So uh, let me start off by uh, welcoming students to the class, doing a little microphone check, and uh, then we'll get started. Uh, Mikhail, uh, Michael. Hello. How are you? Hi. Good morning here. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Where's here? Where's here? Yeah. <laughs> I live in San Sebastián, uh, a oh, uh, village right. near the border between France and Spain. Yeah. Ah, right. That's right. I remember now. Okay. Uh, well, good morning to you. Oh my goodness! Sudden so an avalanche of people came into the class. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, Albina. How are you? Hello, Oakley. I'm good, thank you. How about yourself? A little tired, but hanging in there. Thank you. Um, oh, welcome to the class. Uh, hello, Anna. Hello. Good morning, teacher. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you. Welcome to the class. Uh, nice to see you. Thank you. <laughs> nice to see you as well, as always. Hello again, Heidi. Welcome back. Hello. Hello. Uh, also, uh, I would like to welcome Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca. Hello, Rebecca. Uh, hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm fine. Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, uh, Hogun? Hogan? Uh, my name is Hogun. Hogan. Hogun. Hogun, yeah. It's going to be tricky to pronounce. But Hogan. Hogan. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Hogan. Thank you, Hogan. Uh, thank you for your help. Uh, where are you from? Oh, hold on. Um, I'm originally from Korea South, and I'm living in U.S. United States. In California. Uh, yeah. Okay, California. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how's the weather? Are you getting any rain in California? No, this is always it's pretty nice weather outside. It's cool. Okay. Now, now it's um the twelve midnight, by the way. Oh, right. Yeah, are, are people really worried about the water? Or no water? Yeah, yeah, there's no water in California. It's very uh, dry these days. Yeah, I know. Are people worrying about it. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, uh, sorry, a little sidetrack there. Uh, okay. Anyway, welcome to the class, and uh, also let me welcome Yaroslav. Uh, hello, Yaroslav. How are you? Hi, Oakley. Thank you. I'm fine. How are you? Doing okay, actually. Uh, Real nice to be in your class. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, let's get started. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of uh, little charts here to start off with and talk about a little wheel of co-locations, I guess, what we could call this. Uh, um... Michael, let's talk. About, okay, hang on. Hang on, Michael. Um, 
for everyone, I, there's a couple new people in class. Um, please, if if you could, if you wouldn't mind, um, you can mute your microphone when you're not talking. And then uh, as I call on you or as we take turns, I'll, I'll call on your name. You can unmute yourself and talk because otherwise we, we can hear if you have a sensitive microphone. We can hear every little thing you're doing. You can move on a pencil around on your desk and I, we can hear it loud and clear. Um, so please, if you wouldn't mind muting yourself when you're not speaking, I would appreciate it. Uh, okay. Michael, now I am talking to you. Michael, uh, yes. All right. I know we've talked about your job a little bit before. Would you call your job a fulfilling job? Uh, I don't know what's a fulfilling. <laughs> fulfilling. It's a fair and honest answer. I don't know. Okay, fulfilling job uh, means that it's. Uh, I guess another way to say it. Another. Uh, another co-location rewarding although we often say a fulfilling job we uh, usually say a rewarding career okay uh, you know that? Is, is like an obligation or no 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 a fulfilling job or a rewarding career means that you get you get a lot of out of it uh, get a lot out of it. You you learn things, it makes you happy, it makes you feel secure, yes, you're yes. satisfied. Yes, yeah. in this moment I, I can say that it's a fulfilling job because mm -hmm. and now I'm working on the internet at the, the last three, mo three years. I have been working on the internet and it's a new mm -hmm. new uh, how to explain? How internet could be a new space to to to, to work for me. Mm -hmm. uh, something okay. new for me. So I had to to learn a lot of things. And but the 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 best thing is that all my workmates they they are very good uh, workers. They they know a lot about uh, internet. So yes, it's a uh, cool. Sounds like you're. A fulfilling job for me. Sounds like you're learning a lot there. That's, that's yes, always good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, now, it's perfectly okay. I, I kind of like your choice. It's a little unusual, but I kind of like your choice of wor of words. It's a new space for me. That works for me. That's kind of cool, actually. You could also say it's a new experience for me. Yeah, it's too, a new experience, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Michael. That was terrific, actually. Uh, let me quickly... Quick Quickly give a shout out to Ayara. Hi, Ayara. How Hi, are you? teacher. How are you? Good. I'm good. Thank good, you. Good, good. Nice to have you aboard again. Um, okay. Talk to you a little bit later. Albina, uh, let's look at the next one. We're going to talk about you guys, all your, your your job, or if you don't have a job, your former job, if you're retired, whatever. Uh, Albina. Yeah. Is your job a high powered job? Uh, what does it mean? I'm not sure about the meaning. Okay. Well, that's what we're here for. A high-powered job. For example, the CEO of Microsoft. Da, da, da. The President of the United States. Da, 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 da. Um, okay. Uh, a job that wields uh, okay. a lot of power. Uh, no, uh, I wouldn't say so about my job because I work with children mostly and, t and teenagers. I um I give them some um, extra extra lessons, uh -huh. so that can be music, that can be drawing, that can be English, many many things after the classes mostly, and and also d during the holidays, uh -huh. like now for example. Is it a holiday? So, now? Uh, almost yes, for at, at least for elementary school. Oh oh, like summer vacation. Like that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Right. Of course. Silly me. Okay. Now, probably that's not going to qualify as a high-powered job, but you don't have to feel bad. I, neither does this job that I'm doing right now. This isn't what I would call a high-powered job. I'm not in... Although, oh, well, I don't know. I guess maybe I'm influencing. Am I influencing you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> a little. <laughs> a little. Okay. A lot. A lot, a lot Michael? Okay. Don't, please... 
That makes me nervous, Michael. <laughs> Don't let me influence you too much. Okay, you can learn the English from me, but the other nonsense I talk about, please just ignore it. Okay, please. Uh, all right. Okay, let's let me move on. Anna, of yes. course you, of course you have. Well, maybe you haven't. Have you ever? Applied? Sorry. No problem. <laughs> have you ever applied for a job? <laughs> no, not really at the not moment. Really? No, no, no. Have you, have you before though in your past? My, in my in my past, it, uh, my work uh, was different uh, than other kind of uh, work, but uh, because I um, I had to to pass uh, um, pass it a public competitive examination because I was uh, I work work as a civil servant. But um, but I've never I've never uh, applied uh, uh, for a job uh, in the past mm. in a private enterprise. No. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. But uh, okay. Notice the co-location. You apply for a job. You don't. You certainly don't apply for a career. Um, sometimes we use apply for work, but strangely. Uh, apply for work at the, I don't know, iron factory. Apply for work at the, usually we use it, we only use the co-location apply for work with uh, some kind of a prepositional phrase about where. Um, what word for career? Uh, well, you don't apply for, uh, Yaroslav, you don't apply for a career, you know. <laughs> I almost said a, a career is what happens when you're busy applying for jobs, Yaroslav. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, a little philosophy there. Yeah, you start a career, Albina. Thank you. That's that's true. You start a career in um, cosmetology, whatever. Okay, absolutely true. Uh, just. Uh, Anna, so you know, um, in English, the equivalent, even though, okay, it's the name of a thing, so it's not really a translation, but the equivalent exam in the United States is the civil service exam. Oh, okay. That's what it's called. Okay, thank you. Which, by the way, I passed. I did actually quite well, but I never used it to get a job <laughs> in the government. <laughs> It, it's, it's very strange. In the United States, you want to get a job in the government. They make you, they, for example, they said, okay, we'll give you a job. You can work in the post office, but you're only going to work five hours a week. And after a year, you might work 10 hours a week. And after another year, we'll put you on full time. And it, that's what they do. It's very strange. They make you do a long period of part-time work. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Very odd. So who can afford to do that? I, I couldn't. So that's I just never went down that road. Um, okay. Anyway, okay. It's interesting. Uh, Heidi, <laughs> a permanent job. No. Okay. No permanent job. Um, not to offer a permanent job. Uh, not steady and uh, not demanding and uh, not fulfilling. <laughs> Not high power. <laughs> Not applying. Okay, yeah. I know. I I will talk to you about something else. What is the opposite? No, I can't. Should I say? opposite? Yes, I o think. Uh, opposite of uh, demanding. Permanent job. job. And opposite of demanding job. Opposite of steady job. <laughs> right. What is the opposite of a permanent job? Um, permanent job is uh, like uh, free. <laughs> uh, whenever I can. Yeah. <laughs> free. Well, I mean, you could consider uh, retirement as the opposite of a permanent job. Uh, I, I guess, but I, that's not really what I was thinking of. I was thinking the other co-location with job. When you, when you don't. Oh, okay, all right. A permanent job is actually, this is a little weird for me, and maybe it's a little more British than American. Americans, instead of a permanent job, we would say a full-time job. 
well, you know, the concept of a permanent job is just maybe, not maybe an American I concept. Haven't is a permanent job. Yeah, maybe. Because but you know what? Americans never use this co-location. Because maybe country, a country, we never mm. uh, go bankrupt. But sometimes it go bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, never. Don't never say never. Countries can go bankrupt. <laughs> Would be surprised if a few countries went bankrupt in the near future. Actually, um, okay. Anyway, uh, Americans rarely use this a permanent job. I, exactly, that's the idea. Like a like a government job. You're absolutely correct. That is the concept. But uh, Americans do, however, often say a full time job mm -hmm. or a part time job instead of in lieu of instead of a permanent job. We'd be more likely to say it. A uh, full-time job. Uh, okay, uh, Rebecca. Rebecca, have you ever, in your lifetime, offered someone a job? Well, I've never been a, a employer, so no. I've never, I've never had to to offer someone a job. You know? No, you never no. offered somebody money to clean your house, or to mow your lawn, or to well, in that uh, way, yes, of course, ah. yeah, but, you know, ah. as you say, no a permanent job, uh, just uh, hire right. someone for a short period, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for instance, we have um, a land with grapes, you know, in Spain. Ah, nice. So, in the period of uh, get that uh, grapes, we need uh, extra help, you know, so we pay... Uh, for that job, uh, uh, to few people, uh, many people, for early, uh, one week, for ex for for example. Okay, uh, um, so you have temporary workers. So you yeah. hire temporary help, temporary yeah. workers, temporary help. Yes, you know. mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, in English, Americans often call these people temps. Oh, we got a temp in that's uh, filling in for Wanda while she's on maternity leave, for example, um, something like that. There are people who do this all, all the time. They they are temp workers, and they they actually get hired by an agency and they go from job to job to job. Um, they don't like to. Usually, they would like to be staying at one of those companies. It's usually kind of a a go between, uh, I don't know, um, a filler kind of job. No one wants to do that forever. Uh, I have to ask you, Rebecca, do you make yeah. wine? Yes, yeah. My family produces wine, and actually, we had a wine cellar. And that is my job now, you know. And really? Try to, if, to find if, the clients around the world, yes. Okay, if we, if we say the name of your wine right here on Verbling, will you send me a bottle? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> it's, uh, from, uh, it's, well, it's called Albariño. It's from Galicia, a region in Spain. Nice. And nice. It's quite. It's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I I write I write down the name. Okay. For yeah, you. please do. Will you? I I was going to ask you. Great. Okay. I, okay. <laughs> okay. Nice. I'm going to be looking for this. I'm not joking either. You send yeah. any of this wine? I I live. I'm an American, but I live in the Philippines, and there's recently well, in Philippines we don't have a distributor yet. Oh. yet. but in America you can drink it. It's okay. Uh, it's possible. Okay. All right. Maybe in the future you could do you could could drink it in Philippines. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. I enjoy. I do enjoy uh, Spanish wines. So uh, even from that area, I'm familiar with that as a as a. Uh, wine country. Nice, Rebecca. It's a pleasure to have you here. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. Okay. Um, to riff. Uh, okay. Well, that's a great job. M moving on. Uh, moving on. Uh, Hogai. Uh, uh, Hogan. Hogan. Sorry. Hogan. Uh, a steady job. Oh, do you, do you have a steady job? Ooh, nice. Hogan, are you there? Uh, thanks, Michael. Hogan, are you there? Hello, hello. 
Hogan, are you there? Calling, calling all Hogans. Oh, I can't. Oh, there, it's not working. Okay, or maybe he's at work. All right, that's okay. We'll skip you for now. We'll come back to you, Yaroslav. Do you have a steady job at this time? Uh, steady job is uh, the full-time job. Yeah, am I right? Yes, steady job, a full-time job. That's it. Um, that's correct. Uh, no, I don't have a steady job right now, but I'm looking uh, for a job now. So, uh, who are who are people that don't have a steady job? I was talking to Rebecca, Rebecca about temporary workers, and then I mentioned temp workers. Who else doesn't really have a steady job? You know, another kind of worker. Uh, unemployment uh, people. Yeah, well, <laughs> unemployed people. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, who else? Freelancers, maybe. Freelancers, uh, precisely. Yeah. That's what I was looking for, exactly. People who do freelance work. Um, and by the way, uh, we freelance uh, co-locates with work, not job. We don't say a freelance job. Uh, you, you say, oh, I've got some freelance work that I'm doing this weekend. You wouldn't say I have a freelance job to do. So, okay, okay, freelance workers, maybe occasionally some type of commission, people who work on commission. Okay, hold on. Come on back and see us again sometime. Bye-bye. Uh, okay, so, yeah, a steady job. Uh, okay, that's it, full-time job. Uh, Ayara, last one here. Ayara? Okay. Uh, I forgot. I think you're looking for a job, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. In the moment, I'm looking for. Okay. Uh, do you want a demanding job? Nah. Demanding <laughs> means that's stressful. Something stressful. Yeah, that's kind of what it means. It, it doesn't explicitly mean stressful, but it definitely infers. Stressful. No, no. It takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. Literally, no, that, not, that's what I'm it means. I'm not looking at that kind of job. Okay. Because I used to have this kind of job in Brazil, but in Australia yeah. it's different. Because in Brazil, uh, it was easier to have help in home, to uh -huh. hire someone to clean my house, and I have right. the the instructor. But in Australia, I don't have so I. I, I'm not looking for this kind of job because I, I have to manage just the things at home. Yeah, and right. So, and I, I intend to have kids as well, so I have to conciliate both things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I understand completely. Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah, you don't say – well, you can say demanding work, but we definitely don't use demanding career as a co-location. So, okay. yeah. Again, the idea is that it takes a lot of energy, takes a lot of effort um, and time, but uh, so the stress part is just inferred. It's not directly there, but obviously anything that takes a lot of energy and time is stressful. Okay. So, yeah. Teacher, I have a question. Uh, sure. You mentioned freelance is a kind of, uh, it's not a steady job, it's kind of a temp job, do, do, did you mention? Yeah. And what, what about the actors and models? Because ah, uh, yeah, good one. I think I just didn't think of it. Um, absolutely. Uh, um, absolutely. Uh, that would not be a steady job. Well, maybe an actor if you have a TV show, you know, mm -hmm. right? In fact, I've heard them interview actors and they talk about, oh, I started working on the TV show. It's great to have a steady job. Or to have steady work. Uh, okay, there you go. Um, steady also co-locates with work. Yeah, I've, oh. I've heard actors say that actually. Okay. So okay, good point. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, speaking of work, let's talk about work a little bit. Let's look at these co-locations. Uh, uh, Michael. You carry out work. Uh, <laughs> okay. What's another way to say carry out work? Carry out work. Uh, 
What's another way to say that phrase? Uh, mm. Don't overthink it. There's your, your clue. Actually, a simpler way to say it. To do. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> to do work. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> um, and by the way, uh, yeah, you do work. Uh, we use the very simple word do uh, with all forms of work and things that are considered work. So you do do a, do a job, you do work, you do your paperwork, you do a project, you're going to do a PowerPoint presentation, you're going to uh, whatever. Uh, okay, you got to do the inventory tonight. Whatever, I have to do the do the writing for the marketing copy. Whatever, any so we use do a lot at work, even studying. You do your homework, yeah, okay, uh, whatever. You do an essay, so we use do for all kinds of work. So, yeah, uh, you do work, do a job. You don't really do a career, but to carry out work. Uh, we also use carry out for things like carry out, carry out a project, something like that, quite possibly. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, Albina, do you ever supervise work? Yeah, sometimes, but if I may, if I may, if I may say so. Yes. When, for example, children do some kind of an activity, I supervise it. Yes, you do. I strongly suspect. Okay. In, in this case, I, I, I supervise almost all the time. <laughs> right. You were, I well, try anyway. <laughs> well, you were saying that you give them work, so I'm sure to some degree you would be supervising them. Uh, su supervising them do their, doing their work. Uh, okay. Uh, another one that's here, but it's not here. I'm curious, do you, uh, Albina, do you work for yourself? What does, it, what does that mean? Yeah. It should be on this little wheel of co-locations, but it's not. Uh, work for yourself. That means you're self-employed is another way to say it. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm employed by the state, by the government. Okay. Work for yourself. I work for myself, for example. Uh, okay. All right. Supervise work. Of course, you're a supervisor. Uh, all right. Um, means you get to stand on your sh next, lean on your shovel. Uh, Anna. Yes. Who, when you were working, doing your civil servant work, who did you yes. work closely with? Yes, with my boss or my colleagues. Sure. Okay. Now we we use this co-location. Uh, I work closely with Jim. We can use it for a, you know, an actual person. It's frequently used to talk about uh, departments. We work closely with the finance department. We work closely with the legal division in the company. We work closely with research and development, like that. Uh, can also be used to say, for example, two companies have a partnership. We work closely with ABC Company. Okay. Yes. To do our marketing, for example. So it's used in all those ways. Um, uh, okay. Sorry, teacher. Um, yeah. I have a question. Mm, sure. apart, apart from uh, the meaning of this. Um, a strong uh, collocation, mm -hmm. uh, for example, as to sharing ideas with boss or colleagues, uh, this work uh, uh, could, uh, uh, could mean um, work together um, a lot? Yes, uh, exactly what you said. It, it, it definitely has the idea of sharing information and um, also, right, two things, sharing information, uh, but also working together a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, Both. thank you. Uh, okay, very good. No, thank you. Uh, Heidi, to take on work, uh, Heidi, when you had your 
uh, seamstress shop. Did you take on seamstress work? What that did you mean? Take on work? <laughs> okay, that's what we're doing. Okay, to take um. Okay, now you had a shop where you, where you sold uh, clothing and, and um, dress supplies, okay, uh, seamstress supplies, sewing supplies. Did, if you took on work, then, for example, somebody who needed to change the hem on their skirt or take in a pair of trousers would drop them off and you would fix them. Like outsourcing? Well, not, not outsourcing. Outsourcing would mean that you get the pants from a customer and you give them to somebody else to fix. If, yeah, yeah. if you take on work, then you take the trousers and you fix them. Before I was working in that department, in the clothing mm -hmm. shop. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, needed to uh, fix uh, some part uh, to customers. Okay. So if you're taking on work, that means you're accepting customers, literally. Usually, well, obviously, uh, you're providing a service. That's your work. You wouldn't say, oh, I'm going to, if you worked in a shoe store selling shoes, you wouldn't say, I. Oh. No, no, uh, uh, it's a different kind of job. Okay. Like uh, reforming the shop or something. Okay. For example, let me give you another example. Right now, I really can't take on any more work. My schedule is fully booked, and I really can't accept any new private students right now because I'm booked up. I can't take on any more work. Mm -hmm. So we use it negatively as well. Um, to accept new customers and normally we say this when we provide a service okay so that's it uh, next one Rebecca <laughs> when are you available to start work <laughs> okay available to start uh, hmm. this is a very common phrase uh, Rebecca, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't. I'm. I'm not clear for me what uh, this means. You know, able to start work means I'm not working now. Yeah. What this this is this phrase? It's very common, but it's very common to one particular situation, and that is the job interview. They always okay. ask this: When are you available to start work? Yeah. Uh, and in fact, it will be often on a job application. If you have to fill out a form to apply for a job, that's one of the questions. Um, yeah. Okay. In in Spain, just in Spain in general, not necessarily your business, but um, if people get a new job, uh, when do they usually start? Do they start like a week later, a month later, well, the next day? On on yeah. the, the job, of course, but this, yeah. this uh, sentence is uh, quite common as well in Spain, you know? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, of course. When uh, could you start? When uh, when, are, when? when uh, are you able, yeah, to start? Yeah. 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 And in English, it, of course, it makes perfect sense to say, when are you able to start? But uh, this is really... I don't know. This, this. Uh, when are you available to start work? Just everybody, every HR person in the United but States it, it uses suppose, that. It suppose when you want, because if I'm here, to, you know, it's quite uh, stupid, no? If yeah. I'm here to, to apply for a job, it's because I don't have job, so I'm free. I, can, I would like to. Well, yeah. it depends. It depends the circumstance. Yeah. Right. Ah, some people are trying to get another job when they already have a job. Yeah, the change. Yeah, in that case, yeah, I was. Yeah, it came right. to my mind right now. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, moving on. Well, complete work, finished work. That's kind of obvious. Uh, okay. Complete or finished work. You can complete or finish a job as well. Uh, let's. I'm gonna swing on over to the career stuff here. Let's talk about this stuff. Uh, okay. Ha! Ah, my goodness. Uh, uh, Yaroslav's gone. Okay, uh, Ayara. Ayara? Okay, okay, uh, okay teacher. 
Uh, have you ever wrecked someone's career? <laughs> no, <laughs> never. Have you ever wrecked your own career? <laughs> no, never. <laughs> no. Okay, what does that mean? What could, what could ruin your career? Uh, it implies to be dishonest with the Maybe. yeah with the aim to uh, or, yeah how do you say this to to prejudicate uh, somebody to what uh, how do you say to make somebody be fired or uh, uh, or make a bad reputation of someone. Hmm. Uh, just, what, are, what are you talking about? Like spreading rumors about someone? Or? Yeah, spreading rumors about someone. Uh, talking behind their back, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Ah, yeah, okay. Right. Um, Try to convince um, their boss about someone's incompetent, someone's oh, not horrible. affected. Who does that? That's not good. Okay. Uh, when I see this, though, you know what I think of? I think of professional athletes. Okay, uh, when an, an athlete, for example, a uh, football player, when he he um, tears his ACL, anterior crucial ligament, his knee, main ligament in his knee, that that's going to wreck his career. He's done. You know, when they get injured, that can ruin their career through no fault of their own, right? Mm, okay. We often use this when we talk about that kind of thing. So uh, some accident is a kind of way to ring your own career? Good. If, uh, especially mm -hmm. phys physical, where, you, where mm -hmm. you need to work physically. You know, whatever. You're a dock worker and you're, you're lifting heavy things off of boats. Uh, <laughs> oh, I just, I just read Michael's comment. Very funny. Uh, mm -hmm. Good one. If you're a dock worker, for example, and you pull your back out, you know, your career is pretty much done. Uh, okay. What and about what about a mistake, for example, a doctor make a mistake in a surgery? Ooh. That kind of brain career as well. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Well, that would ruin his career. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. but, yeah. A, a doctor... A doctor leaves his forceps inside of the patient. <laughs> oh my God! You know what? If you want to scare yourself, Google that. Google uh, doctors leaving leaving tools inside patients, and it's it happens amazingly often. It's frightening. What? Oh my yeah. God! You you'll scare yourself. Um. Yeah. It happens a lot. I was like completely shocked, but anyway, okay. <laughs> okay, moving on. Michael, back to you. Nice comment, by the way. Uh, okay. To embark on a career. Embark. To embark. Uh, okay. What I else do you? Know. What else do you embark on? Do you know? It could be starting a. A new, for instance, in my, in my case, when I started working in a new uh, space uh, like uh, mm -hmm. internet, this could be. Yeah, yeah. When you start, a start. Uh, yeah, that's right. Mm. Um, you embark. Okay, you can embark on a career. You can embark on uh, a voyage, for example. You know, uh, sorry. Uh, a voyage. Embark on a voyage, a long trip. Uh, I'll, I'll write it. If you start the the, the 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 round around the wall, for yeah. instance. For instance, yes. Uh, ex exactly. So it's strongly co-located with those two words. Uh, of course, embark on a career. You start a career, begin a career. Sure. Uh, Okay, you can have a once you've embarked, you can have a career. All right, have a career in. And this is uh, it's important to know the phrasing here. It's kind of obvious what it means. Uh, he has a great career in. Uh, you can have a career in the. Sometimes we say a career in the health field. For example, he has a career in medicine. Um. Oh. A 
career in agriculture, whatever. Uh, all right. Uh, a brilliant career. Hmm. Uh, you know, let's talk about this. Did you have a? Yes. a did you have a brilliant career? <laughs> <laughs> Was it a I, I I don't know exactly. Uh, for me, it, it, it uh, has been uh, a brilliant career. <laughs> okay, well then, that's all that counts, isn't it? Yes, although although I've never studied a career um, like uh, medicine, uh, lawyer, or something like that. Mm -hmm. My work. Um, uh, has been always the most important for me. <laughs> uh, very, very rewarding. Um, I feel, I feel, I felt uh, proud. Uh, um, in my opinion, I always um, um, work. Uh, I always did a good, uh, a good job. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, a brilliant career, of course, means that you were very successful in your yes. career. Yes. And uh, well, we can use it in the future tense. I think he's going to have a brilliant career. It's possible, but usually past tense to describe, of course, what somebody has done. Uh, who do you think is an actor or actress who has had a brilliant career? Uh, uh, as to actress, <coughs> as to actress or actor? Yeah. In your mm. opinion, who is an actor or actress that's had a brilliant career in film? Yes, uh, when when they are very famous and they earn a lot of money. For example, um, Brad Pitt and his wife Angelina Jolie. Uh, sure. There you go, Angelina Jolie. Marilyn Monroe, hmm, short but brilliant, maybe. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, that's the idea. That, that's all I want to say. Notice I also said a brilliant career in film. Okay. It's, it's, so many of these phrases we can add a prepositional phrase to say career in whatever. Uh, okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, Heidi. What does it mean if your career takes off? Mm. Um, like uh, airplane? Yeah. <laughs> it means you're a pilot. No. <laughs> not really. Uh, not exactly. Uh, no. If, you're, if your career takes off, it means you're successful very, very quickly. Um, like, we can, like yeah. a plane or a sky rocket. Oh, well, yeah, okay, right. Goes up very quickly. Well, okay, yes, thinking of it um, physically, that's true. All right, so uh, we other things that go up fast, we, we say they take off. Uh, yeah, you're right, a, sky, a rocket takes off, a missile takes off. Um, uh, okay, but so can sales of your product can take off, or your career can take off. Uh, okay, the idea being that it goes up very fast. If you if you suddenly get a promotion, you get another promotion in three months. All right, your career is really taking off. Uh, if an actor manages to get a part in a very big movie in Jurassic World. For example, <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Uh, another common co location, a promising career. Um, when we we're talking about, obviously, we're talking about the future. Oh, I think he has a very promising career, meaning that you you believe it will be rewarding for him. It will be a good career. He'll be successful. He or she will be successful. And um, maybe lucrative. Lucrative makes a lot of money. Lucrative. A lucrative career is another uh, another co-location which really should be up here, but it's not. A lucrative career, uh, one that makes a lot of money. Uh, okay, I want to talk about this next one. Uh, Rebecca, 
what are we talking about to climb the career ladder? What's this about? Is to improve in your in your your career, you know? Mm. You start in a position and you are climbing well, I, I don't know how exactly you use this expression, but I I think I know the, the meaning is uh, to to get to the top of your mm -hmm. of your job. That's it. Sometimes uh, we we say climb the corporate ladder as well, uh, but yeah, the, the idea you whatever you start as an uh, intern and then you get hired full time in the mailroom. From the mailroom, you go into accounts, and from accounts, you get yeah, promoted yeah, to yeah, that's it. And, and then you get to 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 become a a box, a boss. Yeah, you, you get to be the CEO or the chairman. But of course, not everyone gets to be the chairman. No, not everyone. Yes. <laughs> no, they don't. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So that that's an idiom, uh, an idiomatic expression there, which is very common. The whole the whole concept of climbing the ladder. You know, right. Moving from a higher position to another, the next higher position. Uh, Yaroslav. Uh, okay. Her career lasted okay for 40 years. This is common. Yaroslav, at the height of your career, at the peak of your career, what does that mean? Um, I think it's uh, the meaning when you uh, achieved uh, the most uh, successful and valuable uh, in your career. For example, you became a CEO or maybe a president of something. Some okay. corporations could be right. Uh, okay, what kind when of you're most successful in your career? Right. What kind of occupations do we commonly talk about? Somebody being at the height of their career. Uh, maybe sportsmen, uh, some soccer yeah. players. Exactly what I was thinking of. Exactly. Right. Uh, definitely entertainers and athletes. It's very easy to see that they kind of peak. Well, what does it mean if somebody has peaked? Uh, and if somebody has peaked. Yeah. Somebody has peaked. Oh, I think he's his career has peaked already. Notice my verb tense. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, the peak of his career, and uh, he uh, won't, won't have any improvements in his career. Future. Well, yeah, yes, pretty much. It's, this is common. I think he has peaked already. Means he, he's he, exactly. He's never going to get better. He's getting worse now. Uh, at whatever, uh, or he either he's getting worse, like an athlete. He's getting older. He's already peaked. Like, uh, Nicholas Cage. Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> it's, a, it's very sad, actually, because I really like him. I like his early movies. He's past his. Well, I you don't know. You know, maybe he can be like Jack Nicholson. He can just keep going until he's a thousand years old. Uh, I don't know. Uh, past his peak. Uh, okay, we can say uh, he has his career has peaked. We can say it like that. Uh, we often say that about entertainers. Not because they're really worse than they were, but because they're not as successful. They're not s selling as many albums or what have you. Okay. Uh, let's read a job advert and look at some of the... Job adverts have their own language and phrases, so let's take a look here. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right, and these stupid uh, rhetorical questions that you see in job advertisements. Uh, here we are. Uh, Ara, you can go ahead and read the first maybe three lines. Okay. Do you have a good knowledge of the fashion industry? Do you have experience in sales? Are you a good team player? Okay. Well, hang on. Let's talk about those things. All right. A good knowledge of. <laughs> okay. Knowledge of. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Please remember that knowledge is 
uncountable, so we, we can never use an S with knowledge. Uh, all right. Uh, so this is weird. Okay. Uh, this is very, very strange. And this is like the only place you, I have ever seen the indefinite article used with knowledge. But it is very common in job advertisements. Do you have a good knowledge of the fashion industry? It's strange because we're really not supposed to do this. This is a grammar no-no. Uh, do you have a milk? It's like, <laughs> what? doesn't make any sense. Uh, indefinite articles do not belong with uncountable nouns. However, this co-located the entire phrase is super, super common. Um, all right. It's very strange. I think it's self-evident what it means. Do you know a lot about it? Do you have experience? Okay. Very good. Uh, Ara, are you a good team player? Yes, I think so. I'm good. <laughs> what does that mean? Everybody uses it. It's on like every resume I've ever read. But what does it mean? If I work well in a group, hmm. if, if I keep a good relationship with my colleagues, and I'm not a kind individual person. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. Plays well with others. <laughs> Okay, very good. Uh, all right, let's continue here. Michael, you read a couple uh, more lines here. Are you looking for a stimulating working environment? Would you like to be an integral part of a closed team? Okay, let's... We can, okay, hang on. Stimulating working environment. Translation? We're going to give you electric shocks. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> what do you think they mean? Right, uh, Michael, are you suspicious when you read a job advertisement? Yeah, if, 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 the, if this uh, sentence appears in a, in an advert, could be quite uh, hmm, <laughs> strange or not not strange, but but maybe you you can think that is not the it's not the the, the, the right message that they. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that they want to do, to offer or uh, could be some some this story. but I think that could that it could be something that happened. No, it's, uh, I think that now in this moment I have a, a stimulating working environment. Right. Yeah, so it, it is possible. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, right, and we kind of talked about that earlier. Yeah, I, I when I read job advertisements, I read them and I translate. So what do they mean by that? Yeah. <laughs> what do they but really if, mean? But the, if you are working with a very good team with very good uh, workmates, I think that this is the best, uh, the best st stimulating working environment. Right. Uh, okay. The, the next phrase is very also the whole thing really uh, an integral part of a close team. What does that mean? An integral part. Uh, if you are uh, uh, an important part of this uh, team, right. or a, a part who um, who That's is it. linked who is linked with all the the other parts of the team, no? That's it. Yeah, integral means it's important. Um, okay, this is an integral part of the machine. If we don't have it, the machine's not going to work. That's it's a necessary part. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Uh, okay, let's uh, f finish up the job advert here. Albina, please. I'm sorry, I was muted. I, I, for, okay. I, for, I, forgot, I forgot to um, unmute myself. We can offer you job satisfaction and generous benefits. Vacancy must be filled within three weeks. For further details, phone... O eight nine six five four three nine eight two zero two O. Okay, very good job. Uh, good job with the O's. Sometimes, uh, actually, you know, you did the zero in the end. Sometimes, when the last number is zero, native speakers say zero for the last number, but usually they say O for the numbers. So great. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Albino, why, why do you say, wait a minute, why do you say it's impossible to come across the, a job advert like this? Uh, because in France, they are always very serious. So at the beginning of this job advert, you can see some, uh, some questions, for example, like it's really impossible in France. They give you some facts, some information about the post, about the job. Uh, the amount of money you are going to get, the the education that you're supposed to have, mm -hmm. and that's it. So it's very, very official. Oh, okay, I see. And this one, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just impossible to find this one in France. Even right. if someone posts this kind of uh, advert, nobody's going to call or to apply. <laughs> They'll think it's a joke or something? <laughs> yeah, I think so, yes. All right, interesting. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, uh, job satisfaction, generous benefits. Well, everybody, anybody can say generous benefits, but whether they are or not, uh, what are benefits? What do we mean by benefits, Albina? Benefits, uh, it's something that you can get, something good that you can get, not just your salary, but maybe some social package, for example, like assurance. Insurance. Okay. Uh, insurance. It depends on the country, really. Or oh, probably the yes, meals also. Meals, yeah. Vacation, paid vacation time. Uh, yeah, a ticket maybe, a ticket for the bus, or uh, at least yep. paid. Okay. Paid, Transport I don't paid. know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Transportation. Yeah. Very good. Uh, okay. Maternity leave, longer maternity leave, or paternity leave. Uh, yeah, all those things are, are benefits, maybe bonuses, maybe actual monetary bonuses, money, possibly. Uh, okay, vacancy must be filled within three weeks. Okay, the idea being uh, they have to have, they have to get somebody to do the job. Uh, okay, well, we're, we're never going to get through this, but uh, let's see if we can read a little bit of this. Uh, uh, Anna, can you read the first uh, yes. couple sentences, two or three sentences? Uh, yep. Yes, yep. Bella has a job as a PA. Uh, basically, her role is to take charge of her boss, who is not a very organized person, and make sure nothing goes wrong. <laughs> okay, well, what's a PA? Um, um, a high position in a business, I suppose. I don't okay. know. <laughs> Personal assistant. Ah, okay, okay. Or a high-paid babysitter for an adult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take charge of her boss. Now, normally, of course, this is a it would be a weird sentence. If you take charge of something, you take command of it. You take over. So it's a little strange, you know, co-located yes. with boss. You take charge of your boss. Seems a little strange. Yes, uh, you are you are in charge of of tasks, uh, all kind of tasks um, relative to to boss. Yeah. So uh, okay. Um, just uh, real quick, we're we're pretty much out of time here. You make appointments and you keep appointments. All right. That's. The co-location, the verbs that co-locate with appointments. I need to make an appointment. I have to keep them. Uh, appointment. Obviously, you answered phones. You can field telephone calls. You can field inquiries, just like you field baseball. Okay. If you field questions in a press conference, okay, that means you accept them. You deal with them. Uh, okay. Well, uh, terribly. Sorry, guys. I guess I should have hustled up a lesson a little bit more, but I have to go because I have another class I need to get to. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you for the class. Bye-bye.